What is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Power World video and today guys we'll be discussing the top 10 best early game powers that you can get. Now I consider the early game being up to level 20 so we're going to keep it around that stage and we're going to jump straight into it. Now there might be some slight spoilers for those of you that haven't played yet and if you haven't played yet what are you doing? Download Power World right now. But without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Now coming in at number 10, we have Lee's Punk. Now at one stage during the early games, you will probably get a Lee's Punk raid on your base. Try to capture one, because these guys are great at finding dungeons. They have an ability called Sixth Sense, which will highlight dungeons in the nearby area. You can see here on our minimap, we have a dungeon located 20 meters away. The scan radius of the Lee's Punks as well is quite large. So you will find dungeons just by wandering through the map. It is great because you can occasionally miss the dungeons. They're sometimes stuck into the cliff sides and everything like that. So you can very easily miss them throughout the maps. Now Lee's Punk is also a decent worker at the base, containing handiwork level 1, gathering level 1, and transporting level 1. Meaning that you can use him to build tools as well as anything that requires the handiwork ability at your base. Granted, he is only level 1, but that is all you will need for the first sort of 20 levels of the game. Now, if you aren't able to find Lee's Punk in a raid, he kind of becomes a bit redundant because he is located in very hard to find places. You can see here, he's located on each corners of the map. Same for his variant, the Lee's Pug Ignis. So you will have a raid most likely of these guys, and I would heavily recommend capturing one of them. Now coming in at number 9, we have Moserina. Now, Moserina does look like a very unassuming pal, but it is one of the best early game pals you can get, as you can assign Moserina to a ranch at your base, and Moserina will produce milk. Now you're probably wondering, well CJ, what do we need milk for? Milk is used to make cakes, which in turn is used to breed your pals, which is in turn used to create the passive skills for your pals and transfer them later down the line. I apologize for the text down the left hand side, it does appear these guys are slightly bugged at the moment. Now Moe's Arena is a very easy pal to capture, it's not very far away from your initial starting point, you can see here on the map is where they are all located. The sooner you get a Moe's Arena, the better as they will produce milk endlessly for you when assigned to a ranch and you will need milk for your cakes. It is also a neutral type, so you can choose to use it in battle if you really want to. However, I really wouldn't recommend it. They're much more suited to being stationed at the ranch at your bases. Now guys, coming in at number eight, we have Pengullet. Now Pengullet is once again found very easily in the beginning stages of <laughs> the game. It will most likely be one of the first water types that you find in the area and now in my Pengullet is dead so I cannot show you what it does. Nonetheless, when you craft its PAL skill gear, it will turn into a rocket launcher enabling you to fire it at clusters of enemies dealing large amounts of damage. Now this will incapacitate your Pengullet so you only kind of get one shot with him. Which kind of sucks but I can kind of get it because it turns into a suicidal bombing penguin which... I mean, who wouldn't be incapacitated from after being fired from that? However, you can craft a team of the Pengullets in order to just switch in between them very rapidly and fire them. You'll just be left with no powers left in your team. It is also, like I said, one of the first water powers that you'll probably come across, enabling you to use the watering skill to fight water your crops or your crusher or any other machinery that you have. Now, it does also have handiwork level 1 as well as cooling level 1, meaning you can cool your base with particular structures and it's able to help out with crafting. Like I mentioned, it's habitat all located over the first couple of islands, so you won't struggle to find these guys anywhere around that. Now guys, coming in at number 7, we have Tansy. Now, Tansy is a great little guy to have. He does unlock the technology to use a goddamn assault rifle on things. Yeah, that's right, an assault rifle. So he's a very powerful power. We're going to throw him out here and use him on these Rebunnies, and he's going to show you his cheery rifle power. He's a little bit of a madman. It doesn't really... I mean, he's got a bit of terrain in his way and he's kind of just going a bit berserk on it so you do want to try and station these guys alongside you that was terrible tansy what are you doing to me mate i'm trying to make a video here but if you do use them for combat they do have that access to the rifle which is really good you kind of don't get control over it which is why he's obviously higher up here on the list however another reason why he's here is because he is a very good base worker he has planting handiwork lumbering transporting and gathering so you, you can use him to plant your crops you can use him to create items around your base plus you can also use him to do some lumbering around the base and he will transport and gather items as well 
He is a grass type, but he does also learn earth type moves as well. And you can readily find these guys available throughout the majority of the entire map, which means that you can easily get a bunch of these guys to level them up and level up his assault rifle ability, which will in turn do more damage. So there are plenty of places to find him, but let's move on to number six. Now coming in at number six, we have Fox Sparks. And as you'd imagine, Fox Sparks is on this list due to its flamethrower ability. This ability is extremely powerful, especially on grass type pals. It will absolutely melt the crap out of them. Now you can currently see here we're only level 16 while our Fox Sparks is anyway. And we're just absolutely demoing these Relaxosauruses. They just got absolutely dome pieced by our poor little Fox Sparks. That just got freaking yeeted across the map. So Fox Sparks is a really good pal to get early. And the fact that you do get it so early and that it is readily available pretty much throughout the entire map, which is like awesome because it means that you can capture a bunch of these, level them up as quick as possible, boosting the attack and defense of that Fox Spot, as well as increasing its skill itself, which will in turn deal even more damage. You can see here, this is the starting areas, this entire island and this entire island are full of Fox Sparks. So if you really wanted to, you could probably run the entire game with just a Fox Sparks flamethrower. Now Fox Sparks also has the level one kindling, so it will also probably be your first fire pal that you will get. And this will enable you to cook as well as melt ores and turn them into ingots in your base. So do not sleep on Fox Sparks as they are very good pals to get and their pal skill is very good to use as well. Now coming in at number five, we have Life Monk. Now Life Monk is another pal that gets a bunch of guns when you decide to try and use it on something. You can see here it is a very strong pal and it has a very strong pal skill as well where it turns into a submachine gun on your head. You can obviously control that and aim what it's firing at to kill things in the vicinity. And you can also readily capture this guy pretty much across the entire map as well. Very similarly to Fox Sparks. And so you can see here that Life Monkey is readily available in all starting areas, enabling you to once again rank it up very quickly, very easily, increasing the damage and the amount of time you have on its partner skill, which in turn just means more damage, more killing for you, making it a very viable early game pal to have. Now coming in at number four, we have Chillit. Now Chillit is probably one of the first boss pals that you will fight. And this Chillit has a very special place in my heart as it was obviously the first pal that I actually got a saddle on and that I decided to ride around. Chillit is an ice and dragon type, making it a very viable team to use against other pals other dragon type pals as it will have the advantage against them with its ice attacks. And its ice attacks are very powerful. We have Icicle Cutter, which enables us to also freeze victims. And we have the Icicle Spikes, which will also freeze victims as well. Meaning Chillit is an absolute powerhouse of a pal to get. You can also get very lucky and sometimes get very good passive traits on it. Due to it being a boss, you can see here we have Muscle Head on it. And this essentially enables you to be set up for the future with Chillit because it means that you will have better passive skills which you can then breed into other things and just deal more damage to everything. Its work suitability isn't the greatest, but you won't really be using Chillet for work. You'll be mainly using it as a damage dealing boss killing pal. So I'd heavily recommend getting yourselves a Chillet where possible. You can also farm the boss that spawns here every day. It will respawn there, allowing you to go back and recapture it. Now you are also able to find Chillet on the map in these areas. It is obviously a little bit further than early game. So just keep that in mind. Your best bet is to farm the boss up down here. That would be your easiest way. You'd also get a decent amount of loot as well from doing so. Now coming in at number three, we have Dire Howl. Now Dire Howl is one of the first pals you will be able to make a saddle for. They are also slightly faster than your standard pals when mounted. That is actually their extra partner skill. You can see there can be ridden and it moves slightly faster than most mounts. Now you might also get lucky and get the runner trait, which increases movement speed by 20% making my dire howl very fast when I need to get somewhere. So you can see here we are able to move around what I would say very quickly, much quicker than running around on foot. We also then obviously have the ability to still use attack moves while on the dire howl as well, enabling us to deal damage and everything like that. And once again, dire howl is available in the first couple of starter areas. You can see these two islands are absolutely full of them. This island down here, even down at this point here, you are able to find dire howls in absolute droves. 
So I'd heavily recommend getting yourself a Dire Hall. How? They are very good for getting around the map on, and they are obviously faster than most Flyers. Flyers do have the advantage, though, as they are able to scale up, uh, obviously, the cliff faces and stuff like that. You will have a little bit more of a, an issue doing that with a Dire Hell, but it's extra movement speed more than makes up for that. Now, coming in at number two, we have Nightwing. Now, obviously, Nightwing being a flyer is going to have the one-up on a Dire Hell. Yes, it doesn't move as fast, but we are able to navigate our cliff faces, up walls, up structures, anything like that. And we are still able to sprint along the floor, meaning that we can still move relatively fast. Not as fast as a Dire Hell, but we do have the added extra ability to be able to scale things at a much quicker rate. Instead of having to go around up staircases and everything like that, we can simply fly up and go around them. Nightwing is also readily available once again in the beginning sections of the map. You can see here it spawns all in the beginning sections and it is probably one of the first flyers that you will come into contact with, making it all the more valuable for getting around the map and traversing large cliff faces, any sort of terrain where there's a big gap of water in between or anything like that that you can't get over. It is also a very strong fighter, it being the neutral, it is only weak to dark type moves and it does learn quite a few different moves as well throughout its leveling process. So you can see here mine does know air cannon, wind cutter as well as sand tornado and power bomb. And these moves are relatively powerful. You can obviously then teach it extra moves using the fruits as well, but it's mainly going to be an attacking power that you will have in your team. It does only have the gathering level 2 for work suitability, so you will try to avoid using it in your base. So, let's move on to the number one spot and find out who it is. Now, coming in at number one, we have Daydream. Now, Daydream is one of the first powers that you will find at nighttime running around. And her pal ability enables you to craft her equipment and she will then join you in battle as a second pal. Meaning that you can have two pals out at the same time. This increases your damage output by obviously two times the amount as you will have two pals attacking. And Daydream will follow up your attacks with her own attacks, meaning you can do extra damage. I used a Daydream for a very long time as in my party, purely because of that extra ability that she has where she is able to join you in battle alongside your other pals. That means you will have three points of attack going on. From your first initial pal, your second initial pal being Daydream, as well as yourself using ranged weaponry. So I'd heavily recommend adding a Daydream to your party and also trying to find one with good passive skills that will increase its attack because it will deal extra damage from that passive skill and the extra attack that it gets from it. And you can see here just how active it is at nighttime with these guys spawning all over this island. So you can find an absolute huge amount of them, meaning that you can enhance your Daydream exponentially until it's maxed out. And then you'll just be able to dish out a crap ton of damage extra with your daydream. So guys, that is going to wrap up today's top 10. Let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments. Let me know any improvements or anything like that that you think I should make going forward with these. Because I do have quite a lot more of these planned for Power World. But other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hopefully you enjoyed it. And I will catch you in the next one.